Um, already in 1939, um, uh, this picture shows us that there is uh, um, a growing sense of unease with the regime. This is, of course, very much underground. You know, no one saw this picture at the time. But the interesting um, point about about the picture is uh, the ubiquity of images of Mussolini in uh, exhibitions throughout uh, the country at the time. Uh, literally, there wouldn't have been an art exhibition in Italy at the time without images of, uh, of Mussolini in it. And um, the regime um, tried very hard to uh, create um, uh, a series of iconographies of its leader. And, uh, and I, I talk about iconographies rather than a single iconography because Mussolini seems right from the beginning uh, of, uh, of the dictatorship to have taken up different public personas. Um, he could be, um, you know, the, the, the sort of family figure, you know, with his wife and children. He could be clearly, you know, the sort of fascist leader. He was a sportsman. He was sometimes, you know, almost, you know, a dandy type figure. And um, um, whilst there is a quite a tight control of these uh, uh, images, when we're talking about uh, photographic images of, of Mussolini, uh, with the visual arts, um, things are slightly different. Uh, there's no doubt that uh, some of the best artists in Italy at the time were actually very pro-Mussolini and pro-fascist regime, definitely throughout the 1930s. It's only around 1938 that we start to see some of the, um, you know, the beginning of a kind of disillusionment with, uh, with the regime, probably because of the uh, increasing um, uh, links with, uh, with Nazi Germany. And, um, and it's not a coincidence, it is at this time that some of these you know, dissenting sort of voices, you know, start to surface. Um, they're still underground, but, you know, there is a clear sort of, you know, the build up of, a, of an underground movement that really wants to um, change things. Um, Mussolini was um, depicted in very different guises at different stages of, uh, of his life. Um, many uh, commentators have talked about the importance, for instance, of the um, classical uh, iconography of, uh, of Caesar uh, and the, the kind of imperial Mussolini as the empire, the, the actual sort of empire, uh, you know, um, becomes um, uh, stronger. Um, and yet at the same time, you know, what, um, uh, what I think is true is that Mussolini could take up different uh, personas and, you know, he was depicted in very different ways. Um, and you only need to slightly change the um, sort of facial features or the, the, the sort of you know, physical proportions of the figure to turn, you know, this uh, you know figure into a, a caricature. The intense gaze, you know, becomes this sort of uh, rather odd, uh, um, you know, expression. You know, completely unfocused. You know, the lips, uh, which uh, uh, many images, official images of Mussolini, um, uh, um, used as a way to balance off. Uh, the, the rather sort of squat, otherwise, um, uh, features, uh, you know, facial features, uh, you know, here become, you know, extremely sort of, uh, um, you know, stretched and, uh, and inflated. Um, and um, the, uh, the jaw, which, uh, you know, had such a highly symbolic um, uh, meaning uh, in, in terms of, uh, you know, conveying ideas about, you know, the, the, the sort of power and the strong-willed uh, determination of, uh, of the leader, here, you know, starts to get that sort of strange sort of uh, roundness and softness, which uh, will then, you know, become uh, in, uh, in later years, in, in, in the um, uh, production of Zancanaro, uh, will turn into, you know, this, uh, um, you know, almost monstrous, you know, double chin, you know, with, you know, this abundance of, uh, of flesh.